Hello everybody and welcome back to Purbeck. So in the previous episode I was very busy getting a cut of silage from that field and this field. Also I did in the end get a tractor stuck which was inevitable. Um, as you can see it is still pretty muddy here. Very muddy. But we've made it through. So the tow bar can head back to the farm. Uh, these fields will have to be fertilised again for a future cut. But today, I think it would be good to prepare another field ready for cultivation so that it can be turned into a, an arable crop. So we can put a crop such as maize in or maybe something even like uh, wheat, possibly. Uh, it just depends really on the timing. Because I am playing with seasonal growth, so it will likely be a winter crop. So yeah, probably, unless I put a cover crop in to get a, a sort of a free, well I wouldn't say free, but a cheap application of fertiliser. That's probably quite a good thing to do. Yeah, because it would make the field fully fertilised, because if it's grass initially, and we cultivate it up and then we put a cover crop in, uh, then we should get a double application. So no fertiliser bought at all for it. Totally natural. That would be great. So I'm just going to put this over here for now. Um, I think we are going to be using this later, but I don't know for sure. So I'm just getting it out of the way. Because I might end up doing hay, possibly. I just can't decide. I'll decide whilst I'm mowing. It doesn't really matter what we make, because we need both. Uh, right, that is ready to be unloaded with this. So, off we go. I believe the uh, entrance to the fields over there, which I want to cut, are somewhere else. I don't think you access them through this gate. So we'll close this gate. But yeah, I don't know what it is about these two fields, but they're my favourite on the entire map. I think it has to be the water crossing. <laughs> it must be. And having mud there just makes it even more fun. Right, yes, our wagging tail. We need to keep this handy because we likely will need it again in the future. But essentially, if it rains, the fields will become muddy, which is fine, unless we're doing a harvest or something like. The one which really uh, could be problematic if it rains is the forage harvesting. So getting the maize silage. Oh, whoa! What's just happened? Whoa! I I've broken the game. Oh my goodness! It's moving on its own. That's interesting. That's got to be the bar hitting something? I... What? Oh, that's weird. What? It, it probably doesn't seem as weird if you're viewing this, but I've completely lost control of the tractor. It just moved on its own. I can tap to other vehicles, but that tractor's now... Yeah, unusable. i better get out of here before it saves. Oh, it's zooming out on its own too. It was the moment... I went into the shed, so I think this time I'm going to drop it off. I think we can pick it up by hand. We should be able to. Yeah, I'll drop it off and I'll put it in here. Uh, that'll be better. It's got to be related to that. I don't think it's a problem normally. Odd. Anyway, yes, I'll go and get the John Deere again, and then we can unload the trailer. Okay. <laughs> Deja vu. So anyway, uh, we need to, um, I think, probably just put this over here for now. We're going to use that tractor very soon. I didn't want to unload this. It would be nice just to be able to take them straight to the cell point, but we have obviously have to wait for fermentation to occur. Um, and we need the trailer, essentially. We could rest now. Go through to June. Uh, we could do that. But then will, will they be ready? They probably won't. Although they have done 7% in a very short period of time. Hmm. Well, I don't want to unload it for nothing. Cause it basically, we're going to be selling them in the next day or two. And if I unload them so that we can free up the trailer, we're going to have to then load them up again in a day. So it's going to be a lot of time wasting. Um, okay, well, we will rest then and we'll see if they're ready tomorrow morning. It is probably really pushing it, because that would be very fast. We've made it to 9.20 a.m., and they are 80% fermented. 
So if we can go and cut the next field and do all that sort of work, then hopefully by the time we actually need the trailer, when we're actually transporting the bells out of the field, we should be able to go and sell these. And that means we'll be able to bring a load of money in because currently we have 163 pounds. So that needs to change. But yeah, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be really uh, beneficial, not having to unload and then reload. The cows do have enough water, um, but what I will say is there is a mod, which I wasn't aware of, which allows us to plumb in the trough to mains water. Thank you to those people who pointed it out to me, much appreciated. We're going to go with it, but not straight away, because from what I can tell, you do have to pay for the water. Currently we're using the Bowser, and we're getting it for free out of the river. We can't afford water at the moment, which I know <laughs> makes us sound very poor. But yes, uh, we really are going to have to wait for that. We'll have to keep using that for the time being. So let's go to this field. I think it's going to be just the one field that we do today. The one field which I'm going to be definitely converting into an arable field. So let's just get to the end of here. And then I can work out exactly how to get into this field. Well, <laughs> um, I don't know. That looks like a track, but it can't be, because that also looks like a track, but that's actually a river. Maybe go through that field, and then around. I don't know why I don't remember this. Oh, that's interesting. So that is a track, and that is a river, even though they look the same on the minimap. So that would mean that it's actually this field, which is used to access the big field. Do we even own this field? No, oh, it doesn't seem to be numbered. In that case, I don't know if we own it. Yeah, I don't know. But this is the track. It makes me think that we do own it, otherwise we are crossing somebody else's land, which isn't totally uncommon. Yeah, we do own it. Okay, great. That's good to know. Uh, right, this is a big field for this. I think probably I, I want to go with silage because it's going to be a bit much for doing tedding as well. We can get the hay from the local field. We could do half and half, I suppose. Actually, that's probably not a bad idea. So let's cut the entire field, then I can figure out exactly where to split it. Yes, I think that is a good idea. But we want to get the silage fermenting first before we do the uh, hay baling. Uh, we can't really rush into the hay baling anyway because the hay has to dry, well, the grass has to dry to make hay. And it's not particularly sunny but there is sun in the forecast. So hopefully later on today it'll be sunny. Maybe we'll get a sunny afternoon. But this is the one. If we can cultivate this up with the massive cultivator next time then we can uh, put a cover crop in, which is it's not a crop that we make money from, at least not directly. It's more we save money. We, we don't have to uh, pay for fertilizer. So it's gonna, it's a green manure. It's gonna cultivate a natural manure into the ground to improve the yield for the next crop.
well, a bit of a progress update. Obviously, it'd be very nice to be able to buy a front mower. I think probably with the money that we make from the silage bales, we will be able to buy a front mower, because they're not too expensive. But we do have a little bit of saving to do, and we do need to, of course, have money for other things as well. As mentioned previously, our next big purchase is going to have to be a slurry spreader, because, well, the cows are going to be producing slurry, and I want to be only fertilising with cow manure, ideally. I don't really want to be buying granular fertiliser. We should have a lot of slurry produced pretty soon. Actually, I wonder how much they have made. Uh, obviously, we don't want to be buying a spreader until we actually have enough slurry to spread. But, yeah, I think cows do quite a lot of pooping, so there should already be a few thousand litres. Let's have a quick look here. I'm going to go off track. Uh, let's just correct that. There we go. Right, quick. We have... I don't see it. It must be... Uh, must be over at the farm. I think actually I should have gone around the headland three times to give myself more space. But we're getting there. There really isn't too much more to do. Looking good. Oh, it looks like the sun's coming out now. Beautiful. Yeah, the skies have really cleared. And that's this chunk almost finished. Oh, missing a few bits there. Uh, and then we just have that piece over there to do. I'm going to have to go back up to get those missed bits. Just a bit too wide. I like how fast we can go though. It's allowing us to do 14 miles per hour with this mower. There we go. Much neater. Currently the entire field is drying out. So we need to get the windrow across here to do the silage area. I think this side that we're on currently is going to be silage, and that side over there is going to be hay. So yeah, until I've actually started windrowing, I don't think I'm going to decide exactly where we're going to go up to. We'll just leave an easy area for the hay. It all gets a bit awkward up here, so this just wants to be baled. Just wants to be windrowed and baled, not tethered. But we're almost there, and it didn't take too long. I don't know, 15 minutes maybe? I haven't been timing it, but yeah, I'd say about 15 minutes. Maybe a bit longer. But as usual, the John Deere has done a great job. So we can now fold it up and get it taken back to the farm. Little piece there, we'll get that. Okay, switch it off, lift it up, fold it up. Brilliant. So yeah, as we do own this little field up here, uh, we can decide in the future what to do with it. I think maybe we should ha actually have a crossing, a track, visible across here. Um, I know it would divide it. It's actually not a bad field for trees. We could put trees on either side. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, it is. It's a very good field for trees. We could hand plant some trees. That would be interesting, and it would be a good use of the land. Anyway, next up, the windrower. I know we've done this now for, I think, three episodes running. Mowing and tedding and all that sort of stuff. But we have to. But that's also why I want to turn this big field into an arable field. It's just perfect for it. I like to have smaller grass fields. Tractor can certainly do some speed. Okay then, yeah, I think we're going to stick with the John Deere mostly today, except for 
if we're picking up bales. I'm not too sure if we'll get to that. I want to sell that trailload of silage. Should be getting pretty close to being able to sell it. Onto the windrower. And back to the field. I will just stop off to check the bales. 90%. So in that time it's done 10%. So yeah, certainly by early afternoon they should be 100% uh, ready to go. We can actually make some decent money today. Again, I didn't check the uh, fertilizing stage. Like, what stage was it on? Was it fully fertilized or was it just a single application? It's going to be showing half an application, well, half fertilized, one, one application now, because uh, obviously it's been cut. I think we're going to wind up to here. Do the rest as hay. Yeah, this is going to be inaccurate now for that. Indeed. Uh, I think it was probably a single application, but I can't say for sure. Because you can see that there's the odd speck of grass. I've got a few little clumps, and there's no dark specks, the dark blue specks on here. Unless that's just not enough to register, which might be the case. Okay, yeah, that's uh, a good split. I don't think it's 50 50, it's probably 60 40, but that's fine. Let's get the rest of this done, and then, yeah, we can bring the tether down. I, oh, I suppose I could have put it on the front. Hmm. Yeah, I could have put it on the front. Because we're going to need the windrower for that as well. You live and learn. Well, here we are with the baler and the tether. We'll do the telling first, and then we can bale the silage, and then we can sell the silage bales from the previous episode. We will be keeping some of the silage bales from this field, though. We do need them. In fact, we might be keeping all of them, possibly. because we will be very soon getting our straw in from the wheat crop. And as soon as we have that, we can start to do a total mixed ration, which will be very good for the cows. As I said, I would like to get a placeable feed mixer on this map. Uh, we probably won't be able to go on, move on straight away because they're not exactly cheap. But yes, yeah, so it would be nice to have one of those where we just put all the ingredients in, in one go and then it will produce the total mix ration and we can just sort of dispense it as and when we require it. We can tip it into their trough using a trailer. But as you can see that's doing a nice job. Uh, loving the uh, the nice hay colour. 
we can do all of this area and then this can continue to dry and then in the next episode we can windrow it and bale it and we will have to bring the uh, bale wrapper back up to the field so that we can wrap all of these silage bales but yeah let's just get the hay done first of all busy tractor <laughs> it's doing everything uh, we might have to um, get another tractor that really cheap one for the slurry spreading I have found something of interest although I'm gonna have to put the price up because it is extremely cheap crazily cheap um, I'll show you in a second <laughs> it's uh, perfect really for slurry spreading I think I have it enabled but well, that's the telling done. Yeah, let me just see. If I go into my small tractor category. Yeah, it's this. £2,000. Far too cheap. But what we can do with it is we can put on some flotations. Now imagine that with a slurry spread on the back. Like a slurry spreader from 4D modding. Something like that. It would look pretty amazing. That would be so good. And we'd want to have it looking quite weathered, I reckon, because it's going to be spreading poop, after all. And it's quite old. But that's just an idea. I'd love to have that. But I think probably buying it for 2000 which is the price that the mod has set, is probably uh, taking advantage from a, a let's play, from a role play sort of uh, view. Uh, because, yeah, that is, that is cheap. That is super cheap. So I'm just going to take this off here. I don't know for sure that the baler is going to work on this tractor, but I think it will do, because this field is quite flat. It did struggle on the steep field, but this field is way more flat than that. So this is it really, just bale this, and then we can sell the silage. Then next time we can wrap these bales and we can windrow and bale the hay, and then hopefully after that we'll be done with the mowing. Uh, for quite some time because then we need to cultivate this field and put the cover crop in. This will be fast though because we are using a quadrant baler over a round baler so no stopping we can just keep it going which is what I love about this. That's what I really hate about round bales how you've got to keep stopping. Well I suppose you don't have to it depends on the baler but yeah, a lot of them you do have to stop. Many, many bells. Not too sure exactly how many, but we'll soon find out. Can we get
get another one, it's going to be close. I don't think so. But that doesn't matter, because it will get converted into hay. Wow, that is close. 83%. So there we have it. We have produced the grass bales which are going to be wrapped for silage. Let's have a look and see exactly how many we just produced. 19. Shame it wasn't 20, but still. 19, very good. Uh, these must be ready. Yep, they are. They're all ready. We have this bale here, which I've just put on the back. So we have 96,000 litres in total, which is going to be, hopefully, a really, really good amount of money. Oh no, the price is going down. June, so we're here. <laughs> yeah, it was never going to be good, but we, we need the money. We can't be picky. So it looks like the straw and hay sell point is the place to go to. Let's just see exactly where that is. Is that anywhere near here? Where is that? Oh, it's over there. Okay. Well, I think I know how to get there, but I think we're going to go this way. Yeah, I know how to get there. I remember going there once before, well, many times before, actually, in my previous series on FS19. This must be quite heavy. The wheels are actually disappearing through the road. This is the trailer we're going to be fixing up, because currently it has a rotten wooden bed. It has fairly basic tyres. We can really modify it. So just around the corner here, where we would normally go around to the right, we're going to go straight over. Or around to the left, basically. Yeah, it's very heavy. This is top speed. Even this tractor's struggling. There's a good view of our wheat. Looking healthy. And this is where it starts to get a bit narrow, but we should be alright with this setup. It's actually lifting the tractor's front wheels up. That's how heavy it is. These bells do seem exceptionally heavy. The gate's closed. So it looks like if I just drive through this marker over here, they will all sell. And suddenly, we will have no more money problems. They'll just disappear. Ready? Ah, oh, fantastic. £45,458. Money which we've been desperate for. And now we have it. So what a great ending. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.